Pronto. Today's tea vlog is gonna be uh, basically me talking about why I don't want to go viral. Uh, kind of, it's something that's been on my mind a long, a while. And also, I recently read a video, read a, I read a blog post that was really interesting to me that connected to this. So, uh, if there are, like, six digits down there in the view count, then hi, I hope this is worthwhile for you. I'm probably having a bad day, if not a bad week, if not a bad month. Um, anyway. There's a thing that people talk about sometimes, which is, so, yeah, this is done. Uh, this isn't actually designed to stay on the box, but I just leave it there. So, um, there's this guy in Japan who uh, feeds cats and really likes feeding cats. And there's like seven or something that are like his regular crew or whatever. And um, he records videos of it. And he posts those videos with like no metadata. Like like what happens there is the default file name from the camera that he uses gets posted in as the title of the video because he uploads the file and it's the file and and YouTube's default video name is the name of the file. So it's IMG underscore four digits or DSC four digits or whatever. It is just this serial number with no significance. And they're just videos of like like short videos or of, of him like doing something with a toy and a cat not really caring or him off pouring water for a cat to drink or him Offering food for a cat to drink, for a cat to eat, or something like that. They're not viral content. And, like, like, he, he had some moment where, like, there was a huge Reddit thread about this guy. Because he'd been doing it for years already at that point. He had, like, days or months of footage uploaded to his YouTube channel. But, like, even now, like, he doesn't get, like, 50 views. Like, he has 2,000 subscribers because a bunch of people subscribed back then. His videos are hardly ever seen. And, yeah. Like, that got me thinking about, like, um, the videos that are seen. And that got me thinking again, as something I've been thinking about on and off a number of times is just like that I don't want to do a lot of the things that are the um high viewership things this was really obvious when I was like streaming on Twitch and watching other people stream on Twitch and it's like hey you should do this thing so people there's like a little animation in a note that plays when people donate to your channel with the bits or whatever and I'm just like that I don't like interruptions and that's an interruption and like spamming of emotes in the chat just no I don't want it I don't want that to happen um uh, like, what I want out of interacting with people on the internet is stuff which 
is really feasible on a scale of, you know, six people or 20 people and impossible on a scale of a million people. Like, if YouTube is making ad revenue off of one of my videos, like, enough to pay for the hard disk space and bandwidth, then something has gone very weird with what's happening. Um, because, like, the way that they pay for stuff, I mean, they've got the subscription thing now, which is, which is cool. Uh, and that's a kind of model, it's more like the Patreon model, it's a model where stuff gets paid for by some subset of the people who want it to exist, but mostly it's ad supported. And advertising, what they want is people willing to put up with five or 20 or 30 seconds of whatever it is to see something. And I... I'm not trying to do that. And there's, there's basically two reasons why I'm not trying to do that. One of them is the thing I talked about in an earlier vlog, is just um, having trouble with the idea that I'm a worthwhile person. Um, and that's damage. I'm a damaged person. It happens. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's inconvenient. The other thing is just, um, like, as a society, we haven't figured out how to deal with the part where this video is going to be uploaded to YouTube with a URL. And that URL can appear anywhere. The video can be embedded lots of places. And people can click on it. And it can become a huge thing. We don't really know how to deal with stuff going viral. Like, um, another article by the same person who wrote about the cat guy was writing about the, um, blue and black, white and gold dress. And... The person who was buying that dress and took that picture that was, like, poorly framed and badly illuminated so much so that you couldn't tell if it was blue and black or white and gold. Um, they basically just had a horrible time and they didn't get paid what they were worth. That content was worth a lot to BuzzFeed, it wasn't really worth anything. It wasn't worth anything like the, the, that to the person who actually created it, the person who turned, turned it into something that happened. Um, but that's an aside. The, the main thing is just the part where Every time, like, she was in a hotel room on vacation, or in the lobby of the hotel or whatever, and she would click on the Twitter app, and it would immediately crash, because she was getting that many notifications every instant, because her Twitter handle was somewhere, and that many people were watching the video, or were looking at the picture, that it just destroyed her ability to interact with it. And that's the thing that is, has kind of stuck in my head. Like, that kind of thing is what has stuck in my head as an image of what it would mean to become famous. Like, I have a Mastodon account. Uh, Fediverse. It's on a Mastodon instance. If this video blew up, and people found my Mastodon account, I'd probably have to shut that account down, because that's not on Twitter's server. It's not 
Twitter sir it's not my phone blowing up it's a computer being rented by someone in New Orleans for whom this was sounds good enough to me I'm gonna have fun with it like this is a hobby project and it really can't handle viral levels of content probably it would be really expensive and who's gonna pay for hundred thousand people sending listen requests to my account that I have it turned on like I have to verify every single one of those like it's Mastodon so it's probably not gonna be a hundred thousand people that's probably the only thing that's gonna get me out of it but like Being, like, peop, like, um, um, my, my favorite YouTube channel is Innuendo Studios. Not this one. I, I like this channel, but my favorite one is Innuendo Studios. And the video that he did that took off, uh, and sort of took his channel from a thing that I am building to a thing that is live. A thing that hundreds of people are watching my videos or thousands of people are watching my videos. I can actually do a Kickstarter to like get money to make more videos or start a Patreon account. Um, He made a video about Phil Fish, who made Fez, a video game, and about the internet deciding that they hated Phil Fish, and like being an asshole to Phil Fish because they were thinking of Phil Fish as a celebrity because he his game got a lot of press and he got invited to participate in the documentary and also and, and when they were thinking of him as a celebrity they're like well this celebrity is an asshole because he was kind of an asshole i don't care and neither did anyone in the studios it wasn't about that it was about people's reaction to phil fish um It got to a point where he had to lock down all his social media, he had to vanish from the internet, and if he ever goes to, like, a convention in any capacity, there's going to be photos of him, because people are still caught up, or were then, people were still caught up in this idea that Phil Fish was this demon that needed to be, that you need to tell everybody about so that they can agree with you about how much of a demon he is, or whatever. That's what comes to my mind when I think about going viral, is just having this huge target pain in my back of, like, if a hundred people have heard of me, and one of, and one percent of them decides that I'm a jerk, then that's one person, and they can make my life really uncomfortable if they want to that's what a stalker is but like it's still just one person if a million people have heard of me and one percent decides that i'm an awful person that's ten thousand people that's probably that that's like call the police and let them know that if someone says there's a hostage situation happening at your house, they're probably lying. Levels of people who hate you. Because it's possible for that kind of thing to happen. And I talked about in an earlier video about possibility as something that's a really cool thing. It's possible someone watches this video. But it's also possible that a million people watch this video. And it's possible that those million people aren't really nice. And if they do, I hope they are.
if they do, then I'm probably having a bad day. Because that's scary. Like, the thing that's scary about... Like, I think it's easy to forget how scary the possibility is. Like, if I am walking down a, a street and a police officer is walking the other way down the street, they could probably shoot me without consequences. Without major consequences. They might have a month of administrative leave, but... There are so many ways that that scenario could play out which end with me bleeding out on the street and them not experiencing real consequences. And that's power and that's scary. And a million strangers on the internet also have power. So that's why going viral is scary. Because that is a lot aimed at one person who doesn't have resources to mitigate that at all. It's not likely to happen, because I'm not doing... I mean, I'm putting accurate metadata on my videos, but I'm not doing the things that people do to go viral. I'm just doing the things that I think make for a good video. And... I have been bracing myself against this corner of the kitchen counter for a while, so I don't know how good this video is, but, yeah. It's the thing I've been thinking about, because, like, the people you see, if, if you are selecting people by having heard of them, then you end up, like, in the same way that the bus is always busy when you get on it. Because most of the people who get on a bus get on a busy bus. Because that's where most of the people are. Very few people end up on the empty bus. That's why the bus is empty. Um, in the same way, most of the... Uh, in the same way, like... Most of the people you hear of are people who lots of people have heard of. Like, the uh, Innuendo Studios has 200,000 subscribers now. And, um, like, oh, I don't know. You, you can talk about numbers, but, like, if someone, if a million people follow someone on Twitter, then that's, then, then that's a million more people who have heard of them than if a thousand people than if one person follows. And that's a million more people to retweet and cause their followers to have heard of them. And yeah, there's a lot of overlap between those followers, but like a lot of the people who follow someone already follow that person with a million follows. But yeah, that's the... the... So we mostly see the people who already have a ton of followers. And because that's most of who we see, that's, um, we see a lot of that perspective, a lot of the kinds of things that people do who want to have a million followers. Unless we're, like, doing things to choose to not do that, then that's a lot of what we see. A lot of the posts, like, if you're on Tumblr... A, most of the posts that cross your dash are viral posts with a, with a hundred thousand or a million boosts of uh, reblocks. The average post, I forget the number. I don't think the, I think the mean is something like 10 or a, a hundred. Like the median, I mean, the middle, like half the posts get Less than a hundred. But the ones you see get a hundred thousand. So, 
It's easy to miss how much... It's easy to miss the, the feelings of people who want to be at the hundred end because there aren't many of those people. Those people are there for some other reason than a million viewers, but you don't hear those reasons because the people with a million viewers are the people who you hear of. Because someone with a million viewers, 10,000 times as many that you hear of as someone with a hundred. And I probably have like five. I'm going to post a Patreon post that's like, hey, I made a new vlog today. That's going out to two people. And I'm okay with that. But, like, yeah. It's just, in the back of my mind, it's like, if that happened, what's the disaster plan? What do you do if there's a flash flood and 10 million people watch your videos? Oh, I was going to throw this one off. I'd probably make a new account somewhere so I'm not like... So people aren't following me on the account that is my private account with... I, I'd probably resurrect my Twitter. Maybe resurrect my Tumblr. I'd probably have a really bad time. I... I'd probably have a really bad time. But I have sketches of a plan. Um, because, yeah, that's how I think of it. It's, it's an emergency that could come up. 